Good afternoon, everyone. Magandang hapon sa ating lahat. Before I proceed, I'd like to introduce my colleague here. She is the Service Learning Program Coordinator of my office, uh, Ms. Carla Baybay. So, yeah. so, you can see we're very cool. I didn't expect it to be uh, this big, so I just wore my jeans. That's a big. Anyway, so... This is a, my presentation is on the service service learning here at Area College. So can we turn to the next slide? Okay. So uh, I'd like to draw your attention to this uh, diagram here. This is how we operationalize our commitment in our board. I remember in 2006, uh, our president then was uh, Dr. Patricia Licuana. She called for this institutional summit on reaffirming our commitment to the board. You would note during then that, uh, uh, when was that? We call it the uh, Malacanang Siege. We call it the uh, Malacanang Siege when so many poor people become so disgruntled and they stormed Malacanang. Okay, so they stormed Malacanang. And for that, we thought maybe the way they did it was not in the proper way. But the issues they carried were very legitimate. So it made a sting. It made a sting. So are we doing enough? Are the efforts, the, ep the efforts that we do, are they really enough? So it made a sting. Okay. So we called them this summit to gather all uh, employees of Miriam College, different stakeholders, uh, alumni, parents, employees, and even some students. and. We thought about this. Now we talked about this. So, how do we do we actually help you know, the poor? So, Dr. Likwanan, our president then, you know, presented this framework. So you can see, uh, okay. So you can see the different programs we have. You know, Miriam College has academic programs, and it, it, under that also we also have our service learning program, okay, as well as our volunteer programs. So the yellow part you know, would refer to uh, activities that directly link you know, to and with our students. So these students come from the basic education units, higher education, our adult education. By the way, our Miriam adult education is uh, the very first no, in, in the Philippines. In fact, we have this pioneering role in adult education. Okay, so, of course, uh, knowledge, skills, and values that directly relate to the students. But also, we have social and outreach programs no, by way of our different advocacy centers, like my, my office, the Institutional Network for Social Action, the Center for Peace Education, the Women and Gender Institute, and the Environmental Studies Institute. So together, uh, all these programs, no, the social and outreach program, directly link no, to the poor and disadvantaged centers. So we have these two targets here. Okay. So when we discuss that among ourselves, are we doing enough? We have very good programs. We have, of course, service learning, which I will uh, uh, refer in detail uh, a little while. No? And also programs that directly help the poor. So, are we doing enough? We were doing quite a lot in terms of these programs, but we realized that maybe times are changing. Poverty is definitely as at its worst. And so, we are called upon to reaffirm this commitment and to step up our efforts and make them sustainable, to make them more attuned to the needs of the poor. No? But we also set up with this, the question, is Miriam a school for the poor? Definitely not. No? The fact that we are charging tuition and our tuition is not cheap, we are definitely not a school for the poor. So what are we then? No? What are we then? What are we capable of doing? Where are we in the scheme of things? So Miriam, we thought that we could actually act as broker mediators. We can bring, no? uh, we can be the link 
we can mediate no? in terms of the poor having access to quality services. Okay? We can also do some mediating work in terms of policies. So we can also do that. So we thought by stepping up our efforts you know, that uh, relate to our students and also directly to the disadvantaged, we can form students who are citizens, leaders, you know, and professionals, women leaders in service. But also, we have empowered the disadvantaged you know, through capability building, bri uh, uh, bridging the gap, you know, and in so doing, we are contributing to poverty, we hope, poverty eradication and national development. That's our aim. Those are our goals. So are we there yet? I don't think we can answer the question right away. But uh, are we doing our best? Yes, I think so. And at center stage here, because the topic is on service learning, we thought, okay, the, the times are changing now. Maybe, okay, we thought about this, maybe it's not enough that we just bring our students to rallies, okay? So, maybe it's not enough, but it could be a form, right? There are other, uh, other avenues. There are other ways by which we can help the students become citizens of this nation and of the world. And we thought that service learning is a platform to do that, okay? So, what is service learning then? I will um, uh, uh, explain to you. <laughs> My mom is just. Okay, so we see service learning as an integral component in our, uh, in our business of educating our students. So that's why, precisely the point no, that we have an office that leads with that. Thank you, and I'm here. And you don't see me anymore. You hear my voice. <laughs> All right. So, where am I now? I'm staying here. Okay, so we thought that service learning is a way, it's a platform by which we can make our students no, uh, citizens no, of this nation and of the world. Okay? So how do we actually do that later I will tell you. We are doing our best. I know Dean Orsal okay, uh, of Trinity University of Asia. I was in that first uh, conference, who was it? Okay, yeah, at the Tua. So I learned a lot from them also. And we are also applying uh, some learnings there no, here at the Okay, so just to tell you that service learning is an integral part of our education. We have an office, we have a point person, and we have a budget. Okay, so, di ba? Code switching. Isn't it? You see that it is important if you have a budget to do it, if you have a person who can actually do it, and if you have a structure that will help it, that will sustain it. Okay, so that's where we are right now. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay, so the office. Our office is the Institutional Network for Social Action. It's INSA, so some action there. So what are we? Who are we? We are Miriam College's Center for Volunteerism and Social Development. And our task is to develop among members of the school community, especially among students, the value of service and solidarity with the poor. So how do we do this? We raise the awareness and even the social involvement of the students, of teachers, you know, so that we can bring them outside. And later on, I will show you how to do that. So we can be, we will be able to build the, the capabilities of our uh, pop, the, the, the elder public, which is the communities. And for obvious reasons, since we are in an academic institution, or in an academic setting, foremost would be transforming the hearts and minds of students. So that's where we should be good at. So next slide, please. Okay, so just to tell you the thematic programs we have, so we have the three. So you see, service learning there 
is very integral in our operations. Yes. So let's go on to the next slide. So just to tell you our uh, something about our partner communities, we live in, in, the, in the Katipunan area. Okay. This is the Katipunan area. You will see high-rise buildings. I, I suppose you see them, okay, the high-rise buildings. But when you look into smaller alleys, you will be surprised that there are informal settlements. Okay? Okay? Pockets of informal settlements. Okay? And in those communities, on the average, there are around 300 families in each of those communities. So, just to tell you that it's not just the high rise that you can see, but also informal settlements now where urban poor people are, you know, are residing. Next slide. Okay. So just to show you, that's where Miriam College is, and our neighbor is the Ateneo. So, okay. So more or less, those are the areas. So just to show you that. I suppose the adage goes, charity begins at home. So we should be helping out our neighbors, where we are uh, village, village field. So it's uh, on the fringes to our, to our foreign you know, friends. No? Village is the colloquial term for a village you know, near a posh village. So that's village. Gilid means on the side, on the fridge. <laughs> so, over the years, we're able to organize different community groups, in, uh, community groups in our partner communities. So, one would be the Kaisahang Ugnayan Humanian, or in English, Unified Community Partners. So, these are um, people from the communities, mostly women, uh, we're organizing okay. and also our community-based theater youth group okay. so we are also organizing them later on um, we will be embarking on this endeavor we shall be organizing the case in our uh, partner communities we will be organizing a case uh, young case uh, young case and even youth groups that belong to what we call gangsters. Because we thought that uh, we should also be extending assistance to them. So, uh, you know who we are, the programs we have. And on center stage here for this discussion is service learning. So what is service learning? I suppose you've had the previous discussion on this. But uh, for discussion purposes, okay. so service learning is a teaching strategy okay, that uses community service to teach students about the academic curriculum. Okay. Certainly, it is credit bearing. Uh, it is a credit bearing educational experience in which students participate in an organized service activity meeting the identified needs of the community while achieving academic objectives. So what are the elements of uh, service learning? So we have three. It should be providing service relevant to the needs of the community. It should be strengthening academic learning of the students. And it should be advancing the commitment of students towards civic participation, active citizenship, and social responsibility. It's like this. Okay. So these are our uh, expected outcomes. So one, no, it sharpens, it sharpens, it should sharpen the mind of, stu of the students by way of acquiring critical, reflective thinking. Okay. Plus, of course, it gives some benefit to the community through a relevant service. And of course, it fosters a sense of caring for others, which is a deeper commitment that will be built you know, uh, in the process. Okay, next slide. So what is our service learning model at Miriam College? This is what we want to happen. Okay? Our service learning model is that it addresses needs, no? the needs of marginalized groups and communities. So the traditional connotation or the traditional definition of a community would be, could be geographical. No? 
But we are also looking at marginalized groups. So for instance, adult learners. So, okay, so we see that as qualifying to that definition. It should be developmental in the sense that the projects are implemented based on the identified need. Okay? And what we're thinking is that the subjects, so the different subjects we have on campus can actually collaborate okay, and pick up from where the previous teachers left. No? And it should be sustainable in the way that uh, the communities can actually continue these projects. So that's what uh, we envision or what we work towards no? the, the, the different service learning projects that uh, we are implementing in different communities. Next slide, please. So who are the, our stakeholders? So definitely the students, no? partner community. Okay, next slide. Faculty. And of course, in some, our office, no? uh, which acts as a pivot in orchestrating the different phases and the different processes and steps in doing service learning. So just to show you how we do uh, service learning on campus in area, so we do social investigation. So this is where um, the help you know, of the deans and the department, uh, departmental chairpersons are so uh, is sought. You know, so we are dialoguing with them. Just recently, we had this workshop uh, supported by the deans. And we thought that if we want something to be done, you know, institutionalized the right way, we should be seeking the support of uh, decision makers. So after that, we go into the details of the implementation, like the planning, monitoring, evaluation. So there we have different tools you know, that accompany our implementation. implementation. Like of course, classroom presentation. Just to show you that the, every step of the way is uh, uh, there's a, an, an ongoing consultation happening between Miriam, Miriam College, and the community of the communities. So, in terms of documentation, in terms of project implementation, documentation processing and program evaluation. We have developed tools. We have developed tools. And these tools we are continuously uh, upgrading through discussions with faculty members involved in the project, with the deans also, and those who might who will also be who are not yet implementing service learning but have expressed So, so far, this is uh, the, 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 the courses that have implemented service learning. So, from the College of Arts and Sciences, the following subjects. College of Business, Entrepreneurship, and Accountancy. College of Education. You know, and also the College of International Humanitarian and Development Studies, which is the newest college at Miriam. Well, I'm also a faculty member. I'm the chairperson of the social work department, which is part of the SID, so the College of International Humanitarian Development Studies. So just to show you some past projects that we had, okay, and some photos. Okay, go on to the first slide, to the previous slide. So we discussed about the benefits of the lemon grass. So we had this seminar uh, at the Barangay Next slide, please. So another area would be on helping the youth uh, how to explore and actually how to actually apply for jobs. Next slide. This is uh, how to engage in income generating activities, and this involved our youth. Okay. So that's decision making and motivation. Slide. We're also doing youth leadership training okay, through service learning. Okay, next. Gender sensitivity and domestic violence uh, workshops. So we're also doing that. Okay. 
Next slide. Urban and herbal gardening. Also doing that. So that's uh, one of the areas we would like to be uh, very, very active. The fact that we are a dark green school. Later, uh, I was told I, uh, I can, uh, I have 10 minutes to answer your queries. Next slide. So we're also doing solid waste management. Okay, so daycare, uh, early childhood education. Okay, next slide. It's how we are going to solve physical fitness. So before I go into the community, community needs, I've shown you the courses or subjects that we have that have implemented service learning. So these are our in uh, regardless term, comparative advantage. No? So you use something where you're good at. So we cannot be teaching something on engineering because we don't have that. So where are we good at? Our niche, one of our niche areas is on early childhood education. Being a dark green school, also certainly environmental projects. Since we have the College of Business and Entrepreneurship, definitely business. So just to show you that you use uh, you use your comparative advantage no, in doing these projects. So what are the needs they vary? But most of these needs are along uh, thematic concerns like community education and training. Okay, so those are the sub themes there. Next slide, please. Livelihood and social enterprise development. Next slide, please. Organizational development. Okay. And that's it. So I forgot to include there the history of uh, service learning at Miria. But uh, since the school was established years ago by the Marinol missionaries, uh, the legacy is really how to combine academic excellence with service. And so. Uh, I remember I was also able to uh, undergo that training. In the 70s, in the 80s, we had what we call community involvement as a subject. So we have been doing service, you know, integrating in the, into the curriculum the, the value of service and solidarity with the poor. But because service learning, especially, uh, we've come to know it as like a uh, very recent, but the trend, or what you call that, um, uh, the appropriate, no? the appropriate term to be used you know, in in its, in in in, in, in um, uh, the term used in integrating service into the subject of the curriculum. So that's uh, how we did it. So over the years, uh, we keep on improving. Of course, we have to look back. We have to evaluate. And in, in the future, we will be studying no, our impact as well. So that way, we are able to complete the process to complete the assignment. So that ends my presentation.